Tonight, we're in London, and welcome to Question Time for Patriots. Tonight's guests are Dave Furness, who is the West London organiser for the British National Party, Steve Squire, who's a very successful businessman and the stoic London organiser, Donna Trainer who is the London Regional Secretary and she received 7,563 votes in the GLA election. And finally we have Sam Mayhew who is 21 and is the Thurrock organiser in the Eastern Region. And tonight's first question is from Mr Harry Brooks who is a retired teacher and has been ethnically cleansed from Hampstead, London. Do you think that mass immigration will ever be tackled under this Conservative-led coalition? Please try to answer this question without laughing and um, I'll get Donna to answer this question. No, successive government have signed us over to the EU. The EU control our borders, not, not the coalition. This is treason. In a, minor, in a few decades, the British people become a minority in their own historical homeland. This is genocide, which is, uh, in, which is uh, uh, defined by international law. And I'll read the law so you, so you know what the, the, these governments are, are guilty of. The name of the law is, is called Convention on the Prevention and the Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, adopted by Resolution 263A of the United Nations General Assembly on the 9th of December 1948, incidentally which all of our governments have signed up to. Article 1. The contracts and parties confirm that genocide, whether committed in time of peace or in time of war, is a crime under, an, under it, an international law, which they, under, they undertake to prevent and punish. Article 2. In the present convention, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnical and racial or religious groups. As such, a. Killing members of the group. b. Causing serious bodily or mental harm to the group. I'm thinking of Muslim Muslim paedophile gangs that have went unhindered by the British, British establishment for decades and also the psychological trauma of the indigenous British people seeing their self become a minority in their own homeland. Uh, Deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculate to bring about their destruction in whole or in part, I would say mass immigration fits this criteria. D, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. E, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. I think we'll go to Dave Furness for his answer on this uh, question. Okay. Uh, No, the answer is no, because we are members of the European Union, which means we are powerless to act. We're not in control of our own borders. So we cannot stop this tsunami of people coming over from Europe. That's the first reason. The second reason is uh, the politicians are liars. Every election they say, don't worry about immigration, we're going to do something about it, but they never do. You can't trust them. You mentioned this con- condemned government. Conservatives broke their election promises, and the Lib Dems have broken their election promises. You can't believe them, so no, I don't think it will be done under this condemned government. Thank you. Um, surely, Steve, we're being enriched, and we should be looking forward to the extinction of our own race and the rise of the coffee-coloured master race. What do you think? Well, I don't, if we was asked, it would be uh, something else, wouldn't it? And uh, if it's so great, all this enrichment, and in London you're seeing we're actually over-enriched now to the point where we're sick of it. <laughs> yeah. The politicians and the parties would put on their manifesto we're going to enrich you more. We're going to bring in massive immigration. Vote for us. But they don't, do they? Now, why don't they do that? Because they know it's not a vote winner. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite simple. The people yeah. don't want it. Yeah. And, uh, no, immigration's not going to stop. 
uh, with the Lib Conservative uh, Lib Co Co Coalition. Uh, they've always encouraged immigration, and if you keep voting for them, they think, well, you must like it. Because you keep voting for it. So the answer is no. Well done. Over to Sam Mayhew for yeah. your perspective. Yeah, um, just to expand on that a little bit, I think that um, definitely the Conservative coalition government will say that they're going to tackle immigration just to win the popular vote. But um, we all know that, that you know they won't they won't tackle this issue. It's just uh, election propaganda. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Good answer. Final thought there, perhaps we could call this new master race uh, that's been inflicted on us by the government the Inits. <laughs> and that's not the, uh, that, that's the Inits, not the Inuits, because obviously the Inuits are of course an indigenous people. Okay, uh, question, the second question tonight is from uh, Councillor Tina Gentry uh, from Malden, Essex. Okay, yes, I've got a question for the panel, um, rather topical, regarding uh, this uh, coalition government's plan to relax the planning laws and to embark on a massive house building project on Greenbelt land. Please remember that um, our Greenbelt is disappearing faster than David Cameron's election promises. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, over to you to answer this, Steve. Uh, it's all about trying, as far as I can see, it's all about trying to get some form of growth going back in the economy because yeah. everyone knows the economy is flat, it's over, there's no more money to be borrowed or spent. So they're trying to build housing and get something going. But the mistake they're going to make is uh, once they've built over all this land, which I don't agree with anyways, who's going to buy the houses? Are they going to then go and give loans again to people that can't afford to pay them mm -hmm. so that the banks can collapse again with that bad rolled up debt that they parcel off to somebody else to buy? Is that what they're going to do? Because it seems like a reoccurring nightmare again, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't think it's so much that we've got a shortage of housing. I think it's more that we've got a shortage of housing for people who haven't got any money. You know, because uh, there's plenty of houses for sale, isn't there? Yeah. You know, but uh, so yeah, that's my take. I don't think we should be building on Greenbelt, no. No. And you shouldn't be uh, letting people into the country if uh, they haven't got any means to support themselves, ha house themselves. Because I don't know anybody, and I certainly wouldn't, that would dream of going to another country with their family without having their accommodation sorted out and their future all planned for them, with the money yeah, yeah. to back them up. Yeah. Would you, anybody here do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they say, oh, well, you know, uh, but there's British people living in Spain, this, that, and the other. Of course there is. And they'll take British people anywhere in the world. You know why? Because we buy houses. We don't ponce. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we got a problem with here. Too many scroungers. Hey. <laughs> so, Donna, why shouldn't we be pleased that successive governments have con concreted over our green space it, spaces, filled the f homes full of immigrants, and called it progress? Um, in 2000, the 2010 general election campaign, the Conservatives said that they would be the greenest government ever. Fast forward today, and now they're saying that we have to, they're going to rip up decades old planning laws so they can build, keep building on our green land to, to, to accommodate our surplus to requirement population. It's not, they say it's to stimulate the economy, but it's not, it's, it's to, to house these people that, that, uh, that are currently homeless. The, the, the thing about uh, 
when they say it's uh, uh, beneficial to the economy, it isn't because the British people are not going to get these jobs. It's going to go to East U Eastern Europeans, mm -hmm. and they collectively send send billions of home to their places of origin each year. So it's it's not British jobs for British workers. It's British jobs for everyone but the British. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to stop. Over to Dave. Would well, you like to yes, answer this I one? Would, yeah. um, I, well, it's wrong, completely wrong. The Green Belt is there for a reason. It's to stop all this house building. It, and that's not the answer, just to build more and more houses. Because if we do, it will just encourage them to bring more and more people over. Now, to use an analogy, it's like somebody's overeating. They go from medium to large to extra large, 2XL, 3XL. That's not the answer. The answer is to eat less and do more and we're talking about the green belt the answer is not build more and more and more houses it's to stop immigration yeah. that's the answer yeah. uh, final word from uh, Sam Mayhew yeah well um, first of all I think it's uh, an absolute outrage that um, they're building on green on the green belt land uh, in England um, but also the main concern will be that who, who's going to be coming, who's going to be living in these houses and I think that um, that we're going to be seeing a lot of people from London, a lot of uh, the overspill from London come into areas such as, yeah. as Malden here and uh, that it's going to ser uh, seriously change the not only the demographics of the area but the, the social fabric of the area and obviously you know we, we could see um, rises in, in crime and all kinds of things that that come from the overspill from London. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting a comment from uh, Councillor Tina Gentry to have the uh, final word on this. Yes, I'm particularly concerned um, for the area of Morden in Essex where we've got to propose 900 homes to be built in an area where we cannot accommodate the amount of uh, people who have mm -hmm. already moved to our area. Um, our roads uh, and generally our infrastructure just cannot cope with that amount of house building. And it is very short-sighted because we're talking about 900 homes now, but five years down the line, we're talking about a lot more home building. We're going to have families moving into three, four bedroom properties with teenage children, etc., who are going to want a life, a life that our area can't provide for them. Um, what we need for our area is house building for elderly people and people who cannot get on to the first step of the home buying ladder. Tonight's third question is from uh, John Collins. <coughs> uh, he's a retired gentleman and a BNP activist. In light of the recent alleged paedophile ring cover-up revelations within the BBC, would you like to see the BBC abolished? Yeah. A question about the uh, BBC, or as I prefer to call them, the Jimmy Savile Appreciation Society. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get the uh, Sam Mayhew uh, to answer this question. Yeah, well, first of all, um, I think that the, uh, the BBC is a, a sleazy Marxist-inspired organisation, and uh, um, I think that they... Um, that, 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 um, that, this uh, meets with their agenda and they're not too fussed with uh, with, with paedophile rings uh, so they're, they're covering it up and yes I would like to see the, the BBC abolished absolutely yeah over to Steve Squire well a good start would be for them to tear down that hideous statue above the main entrance, wouldn't it, by Eric Gill. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't know if you know who Eric Gill is. That is a zoophile, a, you know, a paedophile. Uh, you know, a, he's the whole nasty lot all wrapped up into one bunch. And you cannot expect anything else that has that as its trophy above the door, really. So that would be a start to say that they're mending their ways. We obviously don't want him to... Uh, 
be wound up too quickly because there's a lot more revelations to come out. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 not a it's not a good organisation anymore, and it's gone. But just like so many of our institutions, they've been infiltrated. We've got good people in the B in the BBC still. We've got nationalists in there, like it, we've got our people everywhere who tell us what's going on. But yeah, I de the def it definitely needs you know a torch taken to it in my view. <laughs> It's a shame Dimbleby isn't here tonight to answer this question. Um, we asked him, but he could. We told. We was told he couldn't make it because he he had an, another job, and uh, his other job being David Cameron's personal butler. Uh, to answer that question, uh, Dave Furness. <coughs> right. Uh, I would not like to see the BBC abolished. What I want abolished is the BBC license fee. Why should we pay for them to brainwash us? That's all I have to say. Good answer. Um, and finally, over to Donna. I, I would like to see the, BM, the, the BBC abolished and uh, uh, the Queen, who's patron of seven ch several children's charities, to withdraw the Royal Charter, the Home Secretary to withdraw the licence to broadcast. It's, it's just a mouthpiece of the state. Get rid of it. Rid of it. Yeah. Um, tonight's fourth question is from Peter Franks, who is the Bexley Branch Secretary. Uh, what does the panel think about this government staging a military intervention in Iran? Right, we're going to get uh, Steve Squire to answer this question because we're running short of time. Over to you, Steve. Well, um, I definitely think that we shouldn't go anywhere near Iran, quite uh, yeah. honestly. It'll, they're not they're not threatening our sovereignty and it's a waste of our resources yeah. and uh, you know contrary to what Hillary Clinton might believe we th you know <laughs> <laughs> might, you know this could be the beginning of World War three yeah. yeah. and you know I mean I'm gonna say th some things I, you know, I don't want to be popular or whatever but Britain and America haven't had a victory no. since World War II, no. apart from the Falklands. And um, the last time they went into Iran or wanted to go near the place, they got someone by the name of Saddam Hussein mm. and they gave him a set of golden spurs. Yeah. All right, this idiot. And he had a war with Iran for eight years. And the Iranians lost a million people in that war and didn't give up a foot of ground. Not a foot. You ain't going to beat the Persians. They've been around for donkey's years. And they're not worried about us. They don't need the Russians or the Chinese, or Hezbollah, all they've got to do is fight us and the Americans. And we can't beat a bunch of guys that live in caves in Afghanistan. You want, and there's 75 million of them. I don't think it's a good idea. And never... And, and, and people are going to say, oh, well, you know, they might get a nuclear bomb, man. Well, what if they don't? And so what if they do? Everyone's got nuclear bombs now. Mm -hmm. Governments get them for Christmas. Mm -hmm. No one's going to use one, because if you use one, you know you're going to get ten times the amount back. Mm -hmm. That's why Pakistan doesn't nuke India, and North Korea doesn't nuke South Korea, etc. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a load of BS and the British National Party, as soon as that war comes, will be out on the streets against it. Good answer. Very good answer. Um, 
as you can see tonight's program this is the real deal uh, this is the real question time and as you can see this crammel, uh, panel isn't crammed with left-wing multiculturalists who will be pandering and snivelling to the ethnic minorities yeah. tonight's fifth question is from uh, Kevin Lazell who's in the youth BMP is the British National Party racist? Uh, over to Steve. Well, the short answer is no, definitely not. Mm. Uh, the, this is a different party from prior to 2010. The whole constitution of this party was changed in 2010. Mm. And... Uh, of, you know, we was, and that constitution was sanctioned in a high court by three high court judges and uh, 70 human rights lawyers from the Equalities Commission. And they said that uh, the constitution did not discriminate. This party is not racist. And if it was racist, I certainly wouldn't be a part of it because no one's going to vote for racial hatred. It's a serious crime in this country. You go to prison for it. And uh, there are organisations out there that say, oh yes, well, but you was only forced, you, was for you only changed your constitution because you was forced to. Well, we wasn't forced to do anything. We had options. We could have gone to court. And if you, you know, look at our record on winning court cases, we could have won that one. But the whole membership voted for that and I was there and even old nationalists and the you know that formed this party abstained but 99% of the, the membership voted in favor of removing certain clauses and having a new constitution the the answer is definitely this is not a racist party this is a modern forward thinking progressive nationalist party is what it is And there are left-wing groups out there whose sole purpose is to reinforce stereotypes about this party. And that's what it is. That's all it is, is reinforcing stereotypes. Because they're going to do that because there's no jobs out there for them and they get paid to do it by the unions. So unfortunately, their view is dated and anybody who wants to reinforce stereotypes is dated also. But we're not. We're a modern, progressive, forward-looking, thinking party that's protecting the British identity. I'm sure there must be a Labour Party directive somewhere uh, telling all their members and people to just stick their fingers in their ears do not debate with the BMP because you will lose. Stick yeah. your fingers in your ears and just shout racist. So, what do you think about that, uh, Dave Furness? Well, uh, the word racist, if you look at a dictionary <coughs> before 1930, it did not exist. It was invented by Leon Trotsky, mm -hmm. who was one of the architects of the Russian nightmare known as communism. Mm -hmm. It's been used by the liberal lefties now. It's one of their weapons in their arsenal, and it's used to teach people to hate themselves, to hate their nation and their cultural identity. Mm. And it's wrong. We should recognize it as it is. It's just a slur word. And the answer is no, we're not racist. We don't hate other yeah. Well done. Uh, good answer. And finally, Donna. Uh, the, the, no, we're not racist. The British National Party is the only political party that has been uh, cleared by the Human Rights Commission to say th that we're not racist, unlike UKIP. <laughs> uh, again, I refer you all to my first answer when I said that uh, genocide, what's happening to us, mass immigration is defined under I international law. It's not racist to, uh, to try and resist your own genocide 
it, it, it's not racist to do that. It's those that impose the mass integration on us are, are they're the real racists, yeah. not us. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Good answers. Good answers. Um, tonight's sixth question is from Chris Livingstone, and he's from Hertfordshire, and he's the organiser there. How would the British National Party solve the current economic crisis? Okay, um, for this question I'm going to start with Donna. Um, the British National Party, we would withdraw from the European Union. Unlike UKIP, we would just rip up the treaties. No, it, it's treason to have a, a referendum on, a, on an act of treason. No, that, no we would just rip up, the, rip up the treaties, withdraw from Afghanistan, save billions of pounds. I, get rid of uh, all these uh, quangos that cost taxpayer billions of pounds with no, mm -hmm. they've got no accountability, they've, they've no place here in, in a so-called democratic society. We would create industry, give jobs to British people. Under Labour, uh, uh, um, foreign nationals, 80% of foreign nationals got jobs. Uh, again, we would make sure the British people got uh, their fair share of their jobs mm -hmm. and give them the money in the, in the country. Uh, Dave Furness? First step is to get out of the European Union yeah. and the, the second step is to bail out Britain not bail out the bankers yeah. and then British jobs for British workers stop the de-industrialisation of this country and stop wasting money on foreign aid European Union and other projects yeah. I think that's already Okay, uh, Steve's going to finish off on this question. Well, there's, um, I think there's a, a lot of a lot of things we can do. The um, for a start of, we, I don't think we should be giving, you know, almost sixty million pounds a day to Europe, mm -hmm. and uh, because we pay in three quid, three pounds, and we get a pound back mm -hmm. when it comes to trade backwards and forwards. Now that's a good deal, isn't it, for us? Yeah. You know, no businessman in his right mind would actually pay you as well to be a part of that deal. They should actually be paying us for our market. We'll just walk away from that and say, we're gonna trade with you if you want, you can trade with us. If you don't, then adios amigos, you know. We're going to trade with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and as we can see, it's a spent force anyway. Uh, they haven't got any money, you know. Everyone's uh, scratching there. It's only for the Germans for them to sell their goods, and, and I think they're getting fed up with it. Mm -hmm. We could uh, we could we could make incentives for reindustrializing the country. Uh, we could make startups zero tax rated. You know, we're getting a hundred percent of nothing at the moment. So anybody who wants to start up any industry business, tax free, mate. There you go. You know, start up, and we'll speak to you in five years' time or whatever. They'll be employing people. You know, there's all sorts of things we can do. Mm. But what we've got to do also is we've got to stop letting people in and adding to the problem because they'll be looking for jobs. Mm. And you know, the, even it's, we've got to the stage now where even immigrants don't want any more immigrants coming in. That's the whole bizarre situation <laughs> of it. The um, we can stop letting legal aid system be abused that I mean we can really go to town if we wish I mean we would be a bit mean but then we're here for the nation not for the world mm -hmm. we've got to look after this place first you know yeah. and there's, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that we shouldn't be ashamed to want to control immigration because every country in the world does it even this country does it but they're not very good at it we, we, should, we shouldn't be afraid about saying to people, no, sorry, you can't have a job, or, you know, we're not going to pay you to sue us, you know, because, you, you know, you was an ex-colony in Kenya, you know, we're not going to pay your legal aid to sue us, no way. I mean, that's just it. And we're not going to pay your legal aid to take us to court if you've been in a prison abroad. You know, these are all wastes and drains on our resources that we could we could stop. There's plenty of money in this country. There's plenty of talent. We just got to tap into it, and we just don't need any help 
from outside. Yeah. I think, also, I think the problem that we're in is caused by globalisation, and I don't think the answer is more globalisation. I think it's less. Yeah. Well, seeing as I'm playing the uh, Mr Dimbleby character tonight, uh, those were definitely not the answers I was looking for. Um, <laughs> being the government patsy that I am, um, I was looking for can we import more foreign goods or start another illegal war or increase the foreign aid budget or stay in the European Union and have closer ties and get rid of the pound or maybe invite the remainder of the third world to come here and live at our expense yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> or maybe treat our pens pensioners who've paid tax all their li lives like dirt or finally <laughs> pamper our prisoners because that's the place where some of the Tory twits end up. <laughs> uh, tonight's seventh question is from Helen. How do we break the monopoly of the mainstream media? They seem to be uh, doing a good job of breaking up their own monopoly, what with the phone hacking scandal mm. and also the BBC's pedogate scandal. So, uh, to answer this question, we've got Sam. Well, first of all, I don't think that you can beat the, uh, the media monopoly, but what we can do as activists uh, and members is get out there on the street with leafleting door to door, making sure they're getting that leaflet through their door and counter the media machine. Uh, but it's obviously a war of information and it's not all bad because we have got the internet, Twitter, fa uh, Facebook, social networking sites which are a good way of breaking and creating an alternative media and, and spreading the truth that the, uh, that the media in this country keeps from us. Steve Squire, your thoughts please. Well, I think as, as long as you've got, you know, um, unaccountable really unions controlling media, you know, like the NUJ, you know, it's going to be very difficult. But the the plus side of it is, is they're burning themselves out. They're like a shining star. They was once very good, but they're coming to the end with the modern technology. Their circulations are dropping because people just won't pay for their Marxist propaganda anymore. Mm. Uh, you can get much better information for free on the internet. The, the elitism of being a journalist, they haven't, you know, is going to go. They're facing the fact that, you know, that, that little club they had just, you know, is gone. Their job is no longer protected, just like everyone else. So, you know, and once we get rid of that, I think we'll get... We'll, We'll get some fair fair coverage. Obviously, we've got to continue on our on our road of breaking down the stereotypes, which we're doing all the time. Parties evolving all the time. But yeah, I mean, it, I think it's mostly down to the NUJ. Dave, furnish your thoughts, please. Well, I'm a great believer in boycotts. Uh, we should boycott these newspapers, especially. Our campaign to boycott The Guardian is working, and that's one way of doing it. Boycott them, they'll end up giving their newspapers away, so what we can do then is boycott the companies that advertise in those rags. Mm. And the other way we can do it is by holding events such as this and putting it on the internet. Yeah. And finally, uh, Donna. I, to a certain extent, uh, the mainstream media has lost its monopoly because we've got the internet, which is becoming more and more popular. It's less restricted, more freedoms. Uh, the mass media is, is, is somewhat 
uh, restricted by the National Union of Journalists, which gives it guidelines, which tells, which dictates to the the press that they should not report the BBC, the BNP, in a positive light, which should be a bit worrying in a so-called democracy. This is not Soviet Union. This is uh, supposed to be uh, Britain. Uh, I, I, again, what Sam was saying about the info war, that we are winning the info war. The British National Party website is the most the, the most popular political website in Britain. So. Mm. Um, tonight's eighth question is from Cliff Lee May. Uh, he stood for Parliament many times and the London Assembly. I'd like to ask the panel how do you think the BNP will fare? in the 2014 Euro elections? Good question. Of course, this does depend on whether UKIP rejoin the Tory party mm -hmm. before or after the next Euro election. Um, over to Sam. Um, yeah, I think uh, the party is definitely in a position now we've rebuilt from the, uh, the, the other problems that we've had in the last few years. Um, yeah, and I think that the party's in a, in a position now more than ever to, to do well in the Euro elections. Uh, yeah, so I, I do think that we will do pretty well in, in the uh, Euro elections. Steve Squire. Well, I suppose it depends if anyone comes out to vote, doesn't mm. it, really? Mm. The, um, the current trend is, is that uh, the people are not coming out to vote. They're voting by not voting. I mean, they're, they're absolutely fed up with propping up the mainstream parties and the fixed elections. Mm -hmm. I mean, the scandalous, we know the Euros are not, but the scandalous first-past-the-post system that this country runs mm -hmm. is out of date and uh, it's unrepresentative of you know the, the population that we have now because we're all so fragmented. Mm -hmm. We need a diverse political system. I think that uh, the Tory vote will suffer, so will the Labour vote suffer. I think all the mainstream parties will suffer and uh, it will be interesting if uh, UKIP stand against the Tories and they don't do a deal, then we could find ourselves doing very well on the backs of UKIP mm -hmm. because, you know, they're going to they're gonna get all the publicity and uh, as you saw in Rotherham, no matter how much publicity they get, the British National Party is never far behind, and for a lot less money and offering better value. Yeah. So we, we, will do, we, will do, we will do just fine in the Euros. Well done. Um, Dave Furness, your thoughts? Well, I think we'll do very well. Uh, as long as we get our message out there, what people should realise is UKIP is a one-trick pony party, they're Tories, basically, and uh, they're, they're a bunch of Hooray Henrys from the Shires. Yeah. So I think we can beat them. Uh, Donna, can we beat the Hooray Henrys? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the uh, Euro elections is a much fairer system because uh, they use proportional representation, unlike our system, what uh, Steve was saying. Yes, that's the reason why we got two MEPs elected last time. The European Union is imploding. The way uh, the BNP differs from the other parties, as I've said before, we would just rip up the treaties, no messing about. We would just get out the European Union. So if you want to, to withdraw from the European Union, vote for the British National Party. Because that's what you Tonight's ninth question is from Jeff Drew from Colchester. What did the panel think of the recent police commissioner elections? So Steve, uh, what do you think of the police commissioner elections? I think they were very undemocratic. The British, Par British National Party boycotted them because uh, we don't believe in uh, electing police officials. They an Another uh, abuse of our democratic process, they didn't have any free mail out so that uh, only the mainstream parties could really take part and get a ch and get and have a chance of being elected they kept it all for themselves again and their friends 
so that uh, because you know you you pay a five thousand deposit, you usually get a free mail out. Mm. But, but they've got the organisations, the big parties with the unions and their big friends in business to back them. Mm. Done deal, wasn't it? So you know, we wasn't having any part of it, the British National Party. We could see it for what it was. So it's, yeah. it's, Dave, what do you think? Well, the the very low turnout shows that most people did not want their police commissioner to be run by the Labour or the Conservative Party or the Lib Dems. Uh, the media um, kept saying that um, the New York police commissioner, New York City had a police commissioner, and he reduced crime. It was Bill Bratton. But he was not elected. He was appointed because of his experience and his skills. So this was different. People do not want their police commissioner run by the Labour, Lib Lab and Con. They don't want that. And that's the response. That's why it was a very low turnout. And finally to Donna. I, uh, the British National Party uh, boycotted these elections. We thought they were undemocratic. undemocratic. Uh, we believe the police shouldn't be politicised the way they are. Uh, they cost £75 million, which we believe could have, the money could have been better spent. A, a lot of the, the ballot papers were actually defaced. People were making a point. I think it's, uh, thousands were actually defaced. Uh, and we were right to, to boycott them because the police actually said that, well, the most of them said that they, they didn't want uh, to be polit politicised uh, either. So they're being paid tune again. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's all we've got time for tonight. So thanks to everyone for coming. Uh, thank you to the panelists. Um, <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this edition of London Question Time for Patriots. Um, real people asking real questions. And The silent majority finally having a say.